pray, are still praying for the virus to be out of this nation. We are praying for a time when the church will be able to proceed on as usual. And we are looking forward, and especially on 6th of, uh, of July, that the president will open the churches so and we are able to proceed on well. Equally, we want to thank God because uh, the church has come back after this. And therefore, we want to thank you for the prayers you gave us, what you have to give. And therefore, this time we want to welcome you to the service. And we begin the service that has passed, so led by the choir, that so that we are able to begin the next service. Together, the people of God, drawn by His Spirit, longing for His Word, to praise the holy name of the Lord, to share His glorious news of grace, to pray for our needs and the pain of the world, to rejoice in His love and to send in His peace. We are hires of the Father, joined us with the, the Son, Son, renewed in the Spirit. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come, I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins in repentance and trust God is faithful, just, and will forgive us our sins. So let us confess them to our Father. Eternal Father, 
God of our ancestors, before your power all things tremble, but through your Son we approach your throne. We have done wrong and agreed to do right. Our sins weigh heavily on our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Count them not against us. Grant us the joy of your forgiveness and lighten in our hearts with the glory of Christ, who died and rose again for us. Amen. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the choice and repentance and the glass of acceptance, the dead life the lost are found, his goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life, and you live in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are those who live in your house. They will, they will always be singing your praise. Praise the Lord. The name of the Lord is Christ. We shall share the glory together. Glory to the Father in whom all things began. Glory, glory to the Son who gave us the Son of Man. Glory to the Spirit who inspires and the news. The Lord our God forever. Amen. We shall uh, have our song for the day. Psalms appointed for today is Psalms 55, verse 1 following. Psalms 55, verse 1 following. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. My thoughts trouble me, and I am distraught. At the voice of the enemy, at the stairs of the wicked, for they bring down suffering upon me and refile me in their anger. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death assail me. Fear and trembling have beset me. Horror has overwhelmed me. I said, oh, that I had the wings of a dove. I will fly away and be at rest. I will flee far away and stay in the desert. I will hurry to my place of shelter, far from the tempest and storm. Confuse the wicked, O oh Lord. Confound their speech, for I see violence and strife in the city. Day and night they prowl about on its wall. Malice and abuse are within it. Destructive forces are at work in the city. Threats, uh, threats and lies never leave its streets. If an enemy were insulting me, I could endure it. If a foe were raising himself against me, I could hide from him. But it is you, a man like myself, my companion, my close friend, with whom I once enjoyed sweet fellowship as we walked with the throng at the house of God. Let them take my enemies by surprise. Let them go down alive to the grave, for evil finds lodging among them. Verse 18. He ransomed me and hanged from the battle waged against me, even though my oppose me, many oppose me. God who is enthroned forever will hear them and afflict them. Men who never change their ways and have no fear of God. My companion attacks his friends. He violates his governor. His speech is smooth as butter, yet war is in his heart. His words are more soothing than oil, yet they are drawn swords. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. But you, O oh God, will bring down the wicked into the pit of corruption. Bloodthirsty and deceitful men will not live out of their days. But as for me, I trust in you. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. We have now to welcome the choir. Give us a number before we get out. Our first reading. I'm gonna live so, live so God can use me anywhere. Thank you. 
a viper driven out by the heat fastened itself on his hand. When the islanders saw the snake hanging from his hand, they said to each other, This man must be a murderer, for though he escaped from the sea, justice has not allowed him to live. But Paul shook the snake off into the fire and suffered no ill effects. The people expected him to swell up or suddenly fall dead. But after waiting a long time and seeing nothing unusual happen to him, they changed their minds and said he was a god. There was an estate nearby that belonged to Publius, the chief official of the island. He welcomed us at his home and for three days entertained us hospitably. His father was sick in bed, suffering from fever and dysentery. Paul went into he, in to see him and after prayer placed his hands on him and healed him. When this has happened, the rest of the sick on the island came and were cured. They honored us in many ways and when we were ready to sail, they furnished us with the supplies we needed. After three months, we put out into the sea in a ship that had wintered into the island. It was an Alexandrian ship with the figurehead of the twins, twin gods, Castor and Pollux. We put, it, we put in a sailor course and stayed there three days. From there, we set sail and arrived at Reggio. The next day, the south wind came up and on the following day, we reached Petuori. There we found some brothers who invited us to spend a week with them. And so we came to Rome. The brothers there had heard that we were coming and they traveled as far as Forum and Appius and the three taverns to meet us. At the sight of these men, Paul thanked God and was encouraged. When we got to Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself with a soldier to guard him. This is the word of the Lord. Yeah, before we welcome our preacher of today, uh, Reverend uh, Lawrence, we want to say thank you so much for all of us who are at home. This week, members, is our half harvest day. Siku ya Mafuno. Let us give for the work of God wherever we are at home, that we are able to support the work of God in our church. Equally, I want to say thank you for those who are still supporting the church. Let us keep on supporting the church because indeed, it is our duty as a church member to support and give you a 10 percent and give whatever is required of you. And therefore, this Sunday is Titan Sunday. And therefore, let us give the work of God in our respective places. And thank God for the many things He has done for us as a family, as a country, even as a community, so that we are able to be blessed in whatever we are going to give for the sake of the church. And therefore, this time I want to take this very nice this opportunity welcome our brother after the choir giving us a number.
Praise God. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you so much for bringing us this far, and especially for speaking to us your word through the readings today. Help me, Almighty God, as I share with your people, and may you use me as a vessel to the glory of your name. For we pray, believing, and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, all our viewers, wherever you are, those who are traveling, those who are at home, I welcome you to this uh, uh, day, and especially this service in Jesus' name. Today, uh, I want to thank the Provost for giving me a chance to share with you and um, uh, as I was looking at the readings, uh, I was debating on uh, whether to use Deuteronomy as the main text or Acts of the Apostles as the main text today. But uh, after a battle within myself, I settled on Acts of the Apostles. But uh, as a primary text, I'll also do a few references as I begin. Uh, with the book of Deuteronomy. And uh, our first reading, if you put it in a nutshell or in context, is about having mercy and being gracious to one another. Having mercy, being compassionate, and being gracious to one another. And uh, to begin, when, when, when Moses is writing Deuteronomy, is reminding a generation of Israelites what God expects of them, especially within, within themselves, how they should live when you owe somebody something or when somebody owes you something. How, how do you behave with that person and their needs? How do you behave with their feelings? Because the people of Israel were one family under God's care. And in accessing how you should behave with one another or evaluating your behavior to one another is an element and a show of mercy because you are, you are putting that person in a balance where they should also see God through you. And therefore, Deuteronomy, uh, you find Moses telling the people of Israel what is expected of them when either they owe somebody something or somebody owes them something or how they should behave with their servants. And I came to understand that life is a journey. And because life is a journey, it really matters how you are going to walk this journey to the glory of God and to the destiny where God will all have the glory. And in our second reading in Acts of the Apostles, which is the last chapter of Acts, we find Paul also on a spiritual journey and a missional journey. Paul is Reasoning to Rome, and he is making stopovers in one highland to the other when he is in Mediterranean Sea. And sailing has never been easy for Paul. He has always met challenges. But within these challenges, Paul can also testify about the grace and the mercies of God in his life and in the team that he's traveling with. If we remember Paul, and I've read about Paul, we know that Paul is one guy who is moving from one point to another point, but with a mission. Whether he was saved or not saved, even before his salvation, Paul was moving. And his, in his movement, he had a mission to accomplish. And he was very faithful to his mission as he was moving from one place to another place. Before God called Paul, Paul was moving to persecute Christians. 
And as a Jew, he knew how to locate where Christians were. He knew, and he was going after them and after their lives because he did not believe in God. But when he met God and God transformed him and changed his life, his movement changed from a persecutor to a missionary who is looking for souls for God. He was out to look for souls. And therefore, Paul is traveling and is in the sea and is going to matter. But there was a shipwreck before going to Malta or before sailing to Malta. What are we learning here? In our spiritual journeys, we'll always have challenges that come our way. We'll always have challenges. But are you able to find the grace of God in the challenges that you are going through? Are you able to recognize that God is merciful to you even amidst those challenges that you are going through. Let us unpack his journey, verse 1 to verse 6, a little bit to see what is within Paul's reach. Melita, now called Malta, is a highland south of Italy was populated by those who were known as barbarians, who were nevertheless civilized in their way. They lived and put themselves considerable expense and inconvenience to care for sudden influx of people who were sailing there, who had nothing but clothes that they, 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 they worn or they swam uh, or, or they were sailing with at the shore. And remember, Paul is sailing at winter time. Those who have traveled, maybe in Europe, you understand when I talk about winter. Winter season is extremely cold. I have never felt winter in Kenya. It is extremely cold. It doesn't matter how many layers you put on. Let me tell you, you will be very, very cold. And it is even worse to sail at such a time. Because sometimes even water froze during winter time. And I remember and I can figure out how these people were suffering in cold. I, 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 don't, I don't imagine what Paul was going through at this time. But what makes warms my heart is that when they arrived, they meet an unusual way of being received by strangers by putting fire for them. Even these people knew their immediate need was to be warm. So they kept them warm by lighting a fire to them. You see, the sign of kindness and mercies to those who are suffering. In our work as Christians, we should have that intuition and a sense of knowing when to be merciful to one another and even to those who don't deserve. They don't, they, they don't have to be Christians so that they may, they may find mercy in us. But they should find mercy in us because we are people who know their God. In verse 6, you will find also the word justice. These barbarians also had a good sense of justice. They supported by religion or religious belief. Their just was supported by their religious belief. Perhaps they conceived of justice as a God, as a God who saw to it that criminals received 
just punishment even if they seem to have escaped. So to them, Paul were like criminals who were escaping from where they were coming from. And therefore, when they were going through that stormy water and they were going through a shipwreck, in the understanding of the barbarians, already God had punished them. But after arriving in Malta, they were now giving them a sign of justice because already the gods had punished them in the water or in the ocean. And now it was a sign of giving them, giving them justice as a religious uh, way of understanding what God needs for his own people. So to them, these were criminals who were running away but landed in their place or landed in their in their home. So what did they need to do? They needed to be fair with them, even if they don't like them. Even if they don't subscribe to their religious belief, they needed to show them some mercy and some justice and even some grace because of their religious orientation. And therefore, this also teaches us that we need also to be good even to those people whom we don't know what they believe in. Just be good to them because being good is a sign of being godly and being informed by your religious belief. And another thing that is scary here is the snake. The Highlanders would certainly know that deadly serpents when they saw one and for sure the serpent which was in Paul's hands when he was trying to gather firewood was a deadly serpent but it could not harm Paul and that is where the curiosity of the highlanders came up and they sensed this could be a servant of God because this was a serpent according to the highlanders it was a deadly serpent and as as deadly as it was it didn't harm Paul Paul just shook it on the fire and that one raised their curiosity and they say who is this man and to that point I can say God was gracious and merciful to Paul friends that is the God we serve he says that even when we walk on serpents, we will not be harmed. I know we are at interesting times and the virus is with us. But I also believe that God is with us. Can I hear an amen? amen. That is my belief. It is deadly time. It is dangerous time. You can't even trust the person next to you according to the words of Mutai Kagwe. You can't. But there are people with need that needs our attention. How can we show them grace and mercy? There are people who can't walk. You have to aid them. But Mutai Kagwe is telling you to suspect anyone around you. I have a mother who needs care and help from her own children. You need to trim her nails. You need to help her move from one point to another. And sometimes even the person helping her is overwhelmed and needs a helping hand. Will you stop helping your mother? <laughs> you have to, in as much as it is risky. One thing I understand, the grace of God is sufficient. That is what moved Paul from one point to another point. God was gracious to Paul. God was merciful to Paul. Even in his journey, God was so merciful to him. 
and he even caused people. Because Paul walked with God, now it was time for people to walk with Paul because Paul walked with God. It was now time for people who even don't know the God of Paul to walk with Paul and to support Paul. I don't think Jack Ma is a Christian, but when, 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 when this COVID-19 broke, I'm not sure if he's a Christian. We have many Christians, but Jack Ma was the first to send donations in Kenya. That is how grace and mercy work. When there is a need, God causes people. They must not be believers of Yahweh, but he causes people to do things for the good of his own people. Why don't we also do the same and be merciful to those who are in need? The power of God working in Paul's life confounded the pagan theology of the world to draw not believers to Christ himself. And therefore, even the pagans were able to support Paul in drawing the non-believers to believe in God. I think calamities come so that people can be moved closer to their maker. I want to believe that even the situation we are struggling with through the grace and the mercies of God is to draw us and to move us closer in understanding God and how the, 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 the word of God works in us. Another thing that I'm learning out of this is that, that the power of God working through the church encouraged and strengthened Paul. Remember, in Malta, they took close to three months before beginning a new journey to Rome. Within these three months, we are very sure that Paul had planted a new church in this island. And therefore, the church gave him the power and the ability and strengthened his spirit to keep going in as much as he was meeting challenges. May the Lord help us that we receive also that power, that strength, that ability that we are not able to focus on the challenges, but we are able to focus on what God is able to do with us. We are looking, we are looking forward for opening of the economy. We are looking forward for the opening of our churches. We are looking forward and strategizing how our children can go to school. But we also need to look forward for the power of God that is within us that can keep us going amidst the challenges. We will not run away from the challenges, but we need something inside us that can propel us and we can be illuminated with the grace and the mercies of God that even when we are within the storms of the challenges, the grace of God is evident. The mercies of God is evident around us amidst challenges. What we need, my listener, what we need, my brother, my sister, is a ruthless trust in the things of God. You need to trust ruthlessly in the things of God and he will illuminate us with the grace and his mercies that are new every morning. If Paul made it, we can make it because the God we believe in is the same God Paul is testifying about. May the Lord bless us. I want to encourage you. We need to be illuminated with the grace and the mercies of God. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Yeah, thank you so much, our dear brother, for that very wonderful message. Thank you even for the sharing that uh, we are able to do it because God is with us. Even in this very hard time of uh, COVID-19, even in the many challenges we are facing, God is going to fight with us and work with us. And may God bless you so much for that very wonderful message. And therefore, we stand together with Christians throughout the centuries and throughout the world today to affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together, I believe in the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was born in the Holy Spirit, born of the Father in the name, Son of the Holy Spirit, was crucified and died in the Holy Spirit. He descended to the dead, on the last day he was again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And in the arms of the Holy Spirit, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, Let us pray. Ask and shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As our second order, so we pray. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray the prayer accorded for today. Today, my friends, is the fourth Sunday after Trinity. The fourth Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. Merciful Father, Grant that all who love you may hear the good news of Jesus Christ and take it to heart. Let your words to us be as the falling of the seeds on good soil, that we may bring forth an abundant harvest for your name, for your name's sake. In Jesus Christ we pray. Let us pray the prayer of peace. O oh God, creator of peace and love of unity. Through knowing you, we have eternal life, and in serving you, we find perfect freedom. Defend us from all attacks of our enemies, so that trusting only in your defense, we may be free from all fear. Through the power of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you have been our God throughout the night. Give us in your care throughout the day. Walking in the light, bearing witness to your way, seeking fast your kingdom, and seeing you in everyone. Guide us in the full sense of your Son, and lead us the path of your everlasting day. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We give all the glory to Jesus and tell of his love. And tell of his love. We give all the glory to Jesus and tell of his wonderful love. Let's pray the prayer for the nation and also the church. Let's pray for the church to, to go on well and to continue to serve his, his people, giving them hope that the church is going to be strong. Let us pray. Almighty God, you rule all nations and that go to your will. We are to pray for this nation, Almighty Father. We are praying for our president. We are praying for the all leaders of this country. We are equally praying for those of us who have been given authority to lead this nation. That Lord, you are able to provide peace in this nation, O oh Lord. Give us stability, Almighty Father. Give us hope at this time of need, O oh Lord. And especially as we contemplate on the issue of the coronavirus, I therefore want to commit this nation before you. And Mighty Father, be with us and guide us. Guide us this nation in a way that is pleasing before you. And equally, Mighty Father, I want to pray for the church. The Lord, you are going to bless the churches, O oh Mighty Father. Even at this time when there are no churches, there are no physical churches, Mighty Father, bless the churches in our homes, O oh Lord. Bless our families. Bless the worships we normally we do on Sunday. And spend this Sunday, Almighty Father. Bless all of us and be with us, Almighty Lord. Give us whatever you require of, of us, Almighty Father. And all our bishops, and all our pastors, and all the people of our churches. Your healthy, keeping spirit of grace. That in, in order that you may truly bless you. 
for them to be your your blessings. That is for the sake of our, of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us therefore join all the prayers we have today, praying for the many needs we are facing, those of us who are sick in our homes, those of us who are sick in hospital or in hospital, that God is going to bless us and attach us at this time of need. And therefore, let us all join together in the prayer of St. Jesus Christ. Together, Almighty God, by your grace, you have come together at this time to bring our little prayers to you. And you have promised your Son, Jesus Christ, where two or three are coming in your name, will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O oh Lord, our desires and petitions. Our saving best for us, that the last in this world, knowledge of your truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And therefore, let us have the choir as we give our offerings.
We are going to pray for our offerings that God is going to bless us. And even the tithing we are giving today, God is going to bless our offerings at home as we give. You see our baby, God is going to bless us and bless the work of God in our church. Let us pray. Mighty Father, we will commit. Mighty Father, this offering is before you. Because of us who are sending now, oh, Mighty Father, the offerings. I want to commit them before you, Lord, that you may take them all on. And they are all able to support the work of God. God's all bless them, oh, Mighty Father, bless their families. Bless their properties, oh, Lord. Bless even their harvest, their businesses. And those who are supposed to work, oh, Mighty Father, bless them in the work of them. They are working with oh, Lord. And I want to touch them and bless them wherever they are, this Mighty Father. And all things come from you, oh, Lord. Thank you and God bless you. Lastly, friends, I want to say thank you so much for being part of this service. Thank you for supporting the work of God in our church. And uh, as we come to the end of this service, I want to say, may God bless you. May God fight with you. May God stand with you. Just as what the preacher has said today, I believe God is going to work miracles in our homes. May God bless you so much, and therefore let us have our last prayer. And may the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ fill you with all joy and peace, in believing that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope, and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you, with you always. For it means to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you, and God bless you. Therefore, we let us have our last song, and then last as we leave. To be ready, I want to be ready, I want to be ready to walk in Jerusalem just like John. I want to be ready, I want to be ready, I want to be ready to walk in Jerusalem just like John. Okay.